Alrighty. So, as many of you guys know, in my previous video, I made a big announcement for all my loyal subscribers, and I said to you guys, my little sad story about the fact that I had had an accident out of the public roads. Now, a little bit more background about everything that happened. Um, I'd lost control of the motorcycle, or lost traction on the front tires, is, is a better way to say it, and I had what is known as a low side. Many of the bikers out there would know what a low side is. Um, basically, the bike washed out underneath me, and I cracked this little engine cover over here. Insurance wanted to wipe the motorcycle off, they considered the damage uneconomical to repair. However, the way insurers work is they primarily get pricing based on cost to replace these bikes. Now, my exhaust was pulled off, the cover was cracked, I had damage to the fairing, and that's pretty much cost to the place. And that was definitely well over the insured value of the motorcycle because it's quite an old bike. And so the insurers were like, look, nope, we're not going to repair this motorcycle for you. It's uneconomical. But no, no, me, I'm way too attached to uh, the beast. And so I was like, there's no way you guys are going to ride this bike off. What options do we have for me to retain the motorcycle? And so what we did was we went through with what is known as a buyback option. So what they do is they calculate what your cost to repair would have been, calculate what the insured value is, calculate what the scrap value of the motorcycle is, how much they think they would have earned if they had to sell it off at auction, um, and they calculate what your excess costs are, which is like a stupid little fee that you have to pay because you've been involved in an accident or whatever. And they take all the math and they subtract everything from whatever and they give you, this is the value they'll pay you out if you do a buyback. And so basically what you end up covering is your excess and the salvage costs, what they could have made if they auctioned off the motorcycle. And this is just some estimate that some guy sitting behind a computer thumbs up and says, hey, we think mm, they're 10,000 Rand or whatever the case may have been. I'm not 100% sure of the figures because I didn't really care. I wanted my bike back. So I got the bike back and, well, just before I actually started, um, before I had the accident, probably about two weeks before, I got invited to this really cool event called Bike Night, which is hosted by the Einstein Motorcycle Club in Cape Town. They are primarily based out in Somerset West, and basically it's just a whole bunch of bikers that get together at a bar, drink and get rowdy and have a good fun. Um, but in the process of going to Bike Night, I'd actually met this guy named Will. His call sign is Will, I have no idea what his real name is, I don't care, but this oak is literally like my saving grace. If it weren't for him, I still don't know what I would be doing with my motorcycle. Um, this oak basically helped me retrieve my bike from the salvage yard. He helped me with a whole bunch of parts fabrication, helped me source a new engine cover, well, not new, second-hand engine cover that will replace the one that got damaged. And um, he's basically been helping me over the past six weeks or so to get my bike back up and running. Now, a little bit of a spoiler, my bike has been running for the past three, two weeks, two weeks, um, but it's been like really janky and like I'd had the old stock headlights with no plastics and the mirrors on and it was just, it wasn't cool to, to ride around. It looked absolutely horrible. The only reason I had to ride around was because my fiance needed the car for the two weeks. There was no way we could work around it. So anyways, back to the story. We spent a good couple of weeks working on the beast. And like I posted on my uh, Facebook page, the beast has been transformed into something a little bit more refined and has now been moved up beastly. Although some of its appearance makes it look a bit bug-like and it's more buggy than beastly, but hey, 
basically it ends. So we've got the bike. We are going to go take a lovely ride out to the warehouse where I'm going to go and do beautiful review of everything that has been done on this thing. And I promise you, like, it's, it's really cool. It, it'll be worth it. Looks like a good spot. Behold the beast. a good idea of everything that's been done on the motorcycle since it was last on the road uh, obvious one I've pointed out a couple of times the engine cover has now been replaced so this is now a different part it wasn't part of my motorcycle originally it's been sprayed gloss black and the plan is that when I do my next clutch service I take this plate off spray it gloss black too new gaskets and whatever I am having a bit of a seepage problem over here you can see that the oil is sweating a little bit I did make a gasket for this It's the first paper gaskets I've ever cut myself so there's a good possibility that my uh, skills are quite not quite up to scratch but I didn't use a sealant for it I only used the sealant on the parts that the owner manual recommends which is only a little strip like so so there's that then my good mate Wolf 
I'm eternally grateful for. He um, helped me fix my exhaust. As you can see, it's no longer this full length thing here. He's pretty much cut it down to exactly the length that I would have preferred anyway. So the hanger now sits exactly 50% on the exhaust pipe. What this means, um, he's gone and he's, what do you call it, he's tapped holes for all of these bolts to fit in. So this thing has got bolts all the way around the exhaust pipe. There ain't no way it's going to come loose like the old one did where the rivets came out completely. None of that's going to happen anymore. Then I upgraded the front tire uh, to a similar dirt dual purpose kind of dirt ready capable uh, front tire i'm running now the pirelli uh mt60 rs mt60 rs in the front which i think is pretty cool um i couldn't find the bridgestone that i'm running on the back apparently it's a discontinued tire which means uh, when i am due for new rears i will be changing to the pirellis for the rear as well uh, new chain and sprockets. I finally took the time to upgrade to a K&N washable filter. So that means that I no longer have to buy new filters every time I do an air filter service. All I need to do is change the one that I'm currently running. Uh, just wash it out and put it back in. Um, I've done a full oil service in the process. I mean the bike was standing so I might as well. And the, the blatantly obvious all the headlights um, so I've got these two Hella value fit mounts which are uh, spotlights which I picked up from Midas and I'm using this top one as a high beam this bottom one as a low beam um, and then I picked up this uh, incredibly Chinese universal round motorcycle headlight uh, off of take a lot for I think 800 or 900 bucks which wasn't a, a heap load of money um, I'd had these spotlights for quite some time so these ones I haven't used uh, on the bike before but I figured it was time that they joined the party and got upgraded um, we fabricated a bracket over here you can see so it mounts into the bottom over here like so and it runs up the whole motorcycle, you can see it's sitting over there, runs up the back, has the lights mounted to it, and even the gauge cluster. So, yeah. Then I got uh, some nice hand guards, which is something that I'd been wanting to put on the Bandit for quite a decent amount of time, but I never really could justify just spending almost a thousand rand on a pair of hand guards but now obviously the insurance money has contributed to that and we mounted the the mirrors to the inside of those hand guards now the only problem that i have with where my mirrors currently are is they are very very limited in their field of view because originally the mirrors were the widest part of the bandit so to give you an idea they used to sit that i think it was 87 centimeters across point to point at its widest setting um, now they are much much narrower so it gave me an incredible blind spot what i did i went to my blind spot uh, mirrors i did originally have them mounted on that hill only to find out that they didn't really help me see what was directly behind me uh, they gave me great blind spot field of view I couldn't see what was there, which doesn't work. It, it defeats the logic. So I unfortunately had to use the pedestals for them. So it kind of looks a bit ugly. Uh, I'm thinking to find a different solution for that, but for the time being, at least I've got great visibility and I can see everything everywhere I am. Other than that, the indicators that follow the seat. This winter's are horrible. It's dark until like half past seven in the morning and it starts getting dark again at about six, half past six at night. And because of that, I wanted something that's just going to make the bike stand out when I am indicating, as do the lights. So 
I would like to do a couple of upgrades to the lighting for the tail of the bike but at the moment there is nothing wrong with the tail of the bike and it is working exactly as I intended to do it works for me and that's perfect so I hope you guys enjoy the look of Beastie I just want to thank you guys so very much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, you know, just watching it right through to the end really goes a long way. I really, really appreciate the support. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if there's anything on the bike that you actually like, please, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. Uh, good old beastie over here. So, yeah, that would be much, much appreciated. Uh, if you haven't done it already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you really absolutely want to support what I'm doing, you guys can check out my Patreon. I don't really post much stuff over there, but um, your little contributions over there would uh, go a long way in helping support this channel. So if you have something that you guys can spare, go check it out. Uh, it, it'll just go a long way in supporting what I'm doing. You guys are incredible and I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time. Just want to say to you guys to remember that whatever life is throwing at you, whatever you do, just remember, don't look down, look ahead. And until next time guys, ride safe. <laughs>